YouTube together. Yay! This is really this fun. This is great. I'm, I, I'm so blessed that you uh, you mentioned this. I didn't know that we could go live on YouTube together. So this is really darn cool, something different. And if you guys don't know, both Raw Chef Yin and I are part of the Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle. Both of our links are below in the description. So, you know, if you're through here, by the end, you can go check that out. We have amazing resources in there, over $1,850 worth of stuff for just $50 only until May 11th. Raw Chef Yin has her Asian sweets and treats book in there, actually course in there. And I have That's my sick. Cravings Buster sweet and savory stew. But today we're talking about creating a thriving business in the raw food movement. Raw Chef Yin, thank you so much for joining me for this. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. You sound like a professional radio announcer. I like it. I can use my radio voice if you like. I do have a radio uh, microphone and I'm, I'm well practiced, I tell you. <laughs> oh, it's so fun. It's fun. It, it is funny, though, because sometimes when I'm doing talks and stuff, I catch myself. I'm like, hey, wait, I'm going into radio voice. This is a little bit too much, almost like a sales commercial. <laughs> Mm. Hey, what's on your t-shirt? I'm curious. You know what? Before I show it to you, this was my first t-shirt design I've made because I've made about, I don't know, 20-some designs. But this was my right. very first t-shirt design I made, I think, about like 14 years ago, 13, 14 years ago. Originally, it was going to be, oh, hello, Anna. It was going to be, Anna. it was going to be bananas, not burgers. That was my first thought. And then, oh, yeah, yeah. And then it switched to, don't have a cow, go bananas. Go ba so, oh, so cute. Yeah, so I created that one, and that was my first shirt. And then from there, it turned into Peace, Love, and Seasonal Fruit, which you've probably seen and spread all over. That's definitely my most sold T-shirt. But uh, that's that's one of the business things that we got. And we can definitely go a little bit deeper into T-shirts and oh, merch yeah. and all that fun stuff. But if, if you guys don't know Raw Chef Yin, I think you probably do. But it, it's... It's time you got to know her, absolutely. She has an awesome YouTube channel. She has a lot of courses, a lot of stuff that we can go into. I would say, Rosh Epian, you, your professionalism and you know, like how awesome your stuff is and how prolific you are. I know, you know in the past, at least you're, every single month or every second month, you're putting out a course <laughs> and you know, have you, have, you, have you toned that down a little bit? Oh yeah, I toned it down because um, <laughs> I, I, was, I was stuck at home during the lockdown, so I, I didn't. I had nowhere to go, so yeah. I was creating a course every month. But now things, uh, since things have opened up, um, and then I'm actually doing like in live in person demos and things like that. So um, I've toned it down, but I'm still creating courses just for um, for the bundles. So yeah, I did one specially for um, the Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle this year. It's on um, Asian sweets and treats. You know, all my favorite. Uh, Asian desserts, but it's raw vegan and oil free and also low fat. So, yeah. Well, I tell you, I was just out shopping. I found fresh durian, but it was Ooh. about 50 bucks per fresh durian. And oh, I'm no. making, yeah, a little expensive. I'm making your durian cookies coming up. So I oh. end up also getting some frozen just because I figured if I bought the fresh for 50 bucks, I wouldn't want to make recipes with it, you know, when it's like really, really super like high quality. I just want to eat the heck out of it, you know? Yes. yes. I'm darn excited to be making those cookies. I think I'm making them uh, either tomorrow or Sunday. I can't remember, but I'll be sharing that as well. Well, Anna's saying oh, she good. has both of our books and the, and the, the bundle, the chat disappeared. Let's see if I can keep that in here so I can see. Uh, no. Okay. So I just got to be quick because chats come up and then they disappear. That's a little bit new, but. Oh, you can see it. I can see it. She says, uh, uh, she says, hi, Yin. Hi, Chris, watermelon and lime here. And then, oh, oh wait, I have to, I think you press the live chat and then it says all messages are available. Then it says, I have so many books and courses from both of you now. I love it. We Aww. love it too. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. You have some of the best courses and you got a lot. And I think. That's a really cool thing to start with when mm -hmm. creating a raw business or creating a business in general. Would you agree that yeah. it's nice to create a really firm base? You know, like it sounds like you really created a firm base with a lot of courses. And then from there, people really got to know you and you branched out and even like promoted even more in live events and stuff like that. Yeah, it, it's interesting because I, I always say like I kind of like 
accidentally fell into this, you know, mm-hmm. like I I was looking for an ice cream recipe and then I found a raw vegan recipe instead. And then I I, I took my courses, my raw vegan courses at Matthew Kenny Culinary Academy yeah. just to make better food so that my boyfriend would eat more raw food. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then people like, oh, can you teach? Can you do this? Can you do that? And then, and, and then like, oh, I'm still teaching and doing workshops. <laughs> doing collabs and you know doing um restaurant consultations and things like that so um, I never planned it as a business but when I I think somewhere along the line I realized like oh I think I'm going to be doing this full time and not like a a passion project thing then I realized like oh I I I better (laughs) be more strategic about things and um figure out what I want to do so that's when I started taking um you know, uh, marketing courses on marketing, on business, and uh, yeah, setting up a business and things like that. And um, yeah, so I think during the the lockdowns, um, I took this email marketing course, and they were suggesting to do a subscription based service. Yeah. You know, so where people um, pay a certain amount of money every single month, yeah. and um, and then you provide yeah, you know, your products, your service, your content. So um, I did that on Patreon. Yes. Yeah, so I did yeah. that for o- over a year. And um, I committed to doing once, uh, one course a month. Wow. Initially. Wow. You did it for a while initially, too. Yeah, I did it for a while. So I have like, I think 26 courses right now. 26 <laughs> online courses. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And did that, from doing that in those two years, a little over, did that like mm. fully become your full time job then, and nothing else outside of that? Yeah, at that time, yes, because we couldn't. Um, uh, at one point, we couldn't run any courses at all. Then later on, you know, you you can, but you know, there's a limit to X number of people, and then you need to do social distancing and you need to do masking. And I thought, like, how do you run a cooking or uncooking thing with a mask on it doesn't make sense to me so I just decided you know what I'm just gonna do this online um yeah. and uh I I like doing it online but I also I, I also enjoy doing the the in-person thing so um I've been presenting at vegan festivals um vegan events uh I think since last year so that that's nice to get back you know, into meeting people, seeing people actually like try the food and make food in front of you. That 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 put in yeah that that personal interaction, in person interaction. Yeah. So that that's quite fun. But I also enjoy the um online uh thing because I re- can reach out to a much bigger audience, yeah. and so many people all over the world can you know have access to um creating more. Asian food because uh, raw vegan food that is because I don't think that there are that many Asian uh, raw vegan creators around yeah, not too many you no. know yeah Absolutely. yeah that's just a and handful it's, it's yeah. so beautiful too with the courses as well because you know that way you put time energy and effort and love into it but then it's there right and it's like yeah. then it works for you you know and we yeah. we either are trading our time for dollars or we're creating something that is outside of time after we're done creating it right and mm. and then it's just like it can steamroll and and reach like you said way way more people um you know it's kind of funny i had a, a similar kind of start too in that I did not really plan to do what I'm doing at all. Like I had zero, zero intention, you know, like studying health and nutrition, went into school for holistic nutrition. And mm-hmm. it was really just for myself. I, I, I didn't want to do it as a career, but uh, raw food hit me so hard. And I just grew in passion for it that it just became a no brainer. I'm like, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to spread. And I think a lot of people in raw food kind of find that, you know, like it changes their life so much and it enlivens them so much that they just want to share but a lot of people don't necessarily know how to start. So it's, it's really cool how we both had a little bit of that similar start and, and then just found ways to spread the things we're passionate about and spread the things that feel good to us. Yeah, I think I'm also quite um, fortunate that uh, my boyfriend, who is a professional musician, he's yes. also, um, you know, I mean, he taught me a lot of things actually because he was the one who I think started selling online courses first before I did it and I was also like exploring different ways and different platforms I mean I I 
I think the first one I ever did was uh, my online tempeh course, which I actually did it on a Facebook group. So I did, yeah, I posted all the recipes there and then I did the uh, actual video on Facebook as a Facebook Live and then it just lives there. Uh, and then I think I did something else. I can't remember. I think I tried doing it through Zoom as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then after that, then he started doing things on Gumroad, and I, I was like, oh, okay. Like then he suggested, why don't you try out Gumroad because it's been it was working well for him. So um, I did that as well. And That's where you he live was, now. Yeah, and he was the one who was usually like, um, yeah, he was the one who was like seeking out all the you know the the um the copywriting gurus or the email marketing gurus or the business gurus and all that. And then he would recommend books to me or courses or certain courses we took together, you know? Nice. So, um, yeah, it's, it's nice to have a partner who is also in a similar line and understands it as well. And then, uh, yeah, we, we discuss like copywriting stuff all the time. And in fact, I'm not a very tech person. I mean, yeah. now I'm not, <laughs> it's, it's funny. I used to work in tech, uh, IT companies for, <laughs> for 10 years, but I was the public relations person for IT company. But after that, you know, when I left, I'm like, oh, I don't want to do anything tech and all that. But so, so he's, he loves tech. So he's yeah. the one who goes like, oh, you know, there's this thing called Reels. And I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> and then he's like, oh, you know, there's this chat GPT thing. And I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. So, so That's I, awesome. I, I do have to, to credit a lot to him that I, I learned from him as well. Although he learns about, uh, time management and structure yeah. and work ethics from me because he's he's like musician like very creative very go with the flow never used an excel sheet before <laughs> until i yeah. introduced it to him well, that's awesome yeah, it so sounds awesome. like you mesh perfectly together and uh, and play on each other's <laughs> strengths and i i gotta say you know that that's amazing because I, I just stumbled through the dark like i i'm not a tech person either but i didn't really have anyone on my side at least not that I wasn't needing to pay and also, um, you know, did, wasn't very effective truthfully back then too. They just didn't really know what they're doing. I think they're just getting paid to kind of say some stuff, but, mm -hmm. but uh, that's really awesome. And I'm, I'm curious when you went from Patreon to Gumroad, mm -hmm. um, yeah. were you able to move your courses over pretty easily or did you have to create new ones or how did that work? Actually, you know what I did? Um, basically, um, I had Patreon and Gumroad kind of running at the same time, but it's different. So so for my Patreon um, uh, supporters, they would get the course first, yeah. right? So let's say I do, do Agent Suites and Treats um, yeah. this month, right, mm -hmm. in May. So because they, they pay a monthly subscription, so they will get the course in May first exclusively for the first month and then after that in june may june right in june then i will put it on gum road mm -hmm. and then um uh the new people who did not who are not subscribed to my patreon then they can buy it as a separate course so those on uh, patreon are paying way less i think they were paying like maybe 25 to 30 us dollars a month whereas my courses are uh 50 us dollars and above yeah Nice. Wow, that's yeah, a really cool so, setup. So you still have the Patreon going then? Um, no, no, I, I, no. I this. What happened was, I think I decided to. Uh, I took a break because I was like burnt out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Honestly, mm -hmm. I wouldn't. I think I wouldn't recommend people to come up with a course every single month. Maybe like that's once. A lot. A, yeah, it's a lot. I, I don't know you how are, I did it. <laughs> you are you are so strong, and I mean. It was, it was probably just so perfect with, like you said, with the lockdowns and everything. Yeah. It's like, all right, well, this is what I'm going to pour my energy into and yeah. you know, create that base and, and a, a ro steamrolling effect. Yeah, I think it was just like, at that time, creating the courses was what kept, kept me sane. Because if not, I was just like, we were stuck at home, you know, you, we, you couldn't go to places or you could only go out for an hour. Or you're like, you know, yeah, there was like all sorts of crazy restrictions. Yeah, so... At one point, we couldn't even go to the park, you know. No. Can you imagine it? This is outdoors and you can't even go outdoors, you know. People were fine for going, like, jogging outside. So, yeah. So, anyway. Crazy. Oh. <laughs> Happy work anyway, through that. Yeah. So, I think that at that point in time, creating the courses um, once a month was that kept me sane. Also, I think if... Uh, 
it was also me because I gave myself a lot of, um, you know, I, I like when when my boyfriend creates a course, he does he still he's still doing it once a month, but his is oh. like maybe like a thirty minute class or forty minute class. It's just like one topic and focus on that. So it's kind of like yeah, a class. You see, it's not so much of a course. I guess it's a class. Whereas um, for mine, you know, I, I remember I started with like three, four recipes and I went like, oh, but then I can do this and I can do this and I can do all sorts of things, you know. So I just kind of like added on so many recipes which gave me so much work to do. I mean, <laughs> it's the same thing with this Asian sweets and treats. Yeah. I think I have like 30 over recipes. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah, I, I was planning to do only like 20. And then after yeah. that, I did like, oh, but I could add this one in. I could add this one in. How about I put in bonus recipes? So, so yeah, that was the thing. Oh, dear. The, what was, sorry, what was the question? Oh, yeah, you were asking about Patreon and Gumroad, right? Yeah, yeah. How did that go? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I saw Anna's, um, uh, I wanted to answer Anna's question before I forget as well. Thank you. Um, Anna said, there's, that's a great USP you have found with raw vegan Asian food. And you are probably um, probably one of the few raw vegans in Malaysia. Yeah. yeah. So I, I remember I remember doing thinking about this very clearly because um, because um, I learned how to I learned the techniques of raw food, right? At Matthew Kenny and also many other courses as well. Um I mean, basically, you learn about food processing, about blending, dehydration, fermenting, sprouting, you know, that kind of thing. And then I was like, oh, but we could always take this and apply it to Asian dishes as well. Because, yeah. you know, the usual ones that everybody is familiar with is basically your raw pad, pad thai. thai. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It and isn't even pad thai sometimes. <laughs> but I guess there's so <laughs> many different pad thais, kind of. But even more within the raw food. <laughs> <laughs> uh yes we had this uh, discussion before <laughs> anyway um yeah and then nori right and then i guess some curries as well which doesn't yeah. taste anything like the curries here in malaysia so yeah. i was like wow you know i i felt like and because i have this um i mean i've been eating asian food like for like 50 years of my life right yeah and um, I no, love no, it wait, so wait, much. stop, stop. You're you're only like nineteen, so you know, unless you're talking about previous lives. So, okay, we'll move on though. <laughs> yeah. So, so I was just like, you know, and and I was also thinking like, oh, I should do this. Um, um, this is what I love, and this is what people are not doing. So I should go into it. But you know what? I uh, <laughs> it's funny because when I first started doing um classes in Malaysia, people are like oh, can you teach us how to make brownies? And then here I am teaching how to make tom yum and green curry. And, and they're yeah. like, can you teach us how to make kale chips? <laughs> like, I already so eat I, that and I don't want to try something different. I, I want those brownies and uh, a burger. <laughs> yeah. Teach us how to make raw lasagna. And I was just like, you know, the first few years when I, I kept pushing Asian food and people kept... People here in Malaysia and Asia, like Malaysia, Singapore, you know, and all that, they kept asking me to do Western. And, and at one point, I almost went like, you know what, I'm giving up on this Asian thing because nobody's, no one's picking it up. Yeah. But when I said I was going to give it up, then that's when the interest started coming in. I think, uh -huh. I think the universe was going like, oh, you know, let's just like push her and test her and see whether she's going to stick to it or not. So... That's, I think that's the truth with a lot of things, you know, like musicians and stuff when they quit or unfortunately if they pass away, that's when they, that's when they really make it a lot of the times. It's like uh, the exclusivity and, you know, I, I'm curious though, do you find now with the Asian cuisine, because definitely you're known for like authentic Asian cuisine and I'm guilty, I'll admit sometimes of doing my best to, uh, to make dishes from around the world, but without mm -hmm. having that background. I mean, now for me, like some stuff, for example, in my new book, I, I made a, uh, Ethiopian I made a whole bunch of stuff but mm. but I mean Ethiopian was the last cuisine that I really explored before I went raw because I was vegan and in Vancouver there's awesome Ethiopian so I'm going off of like mm. 20 years of uh, back then right it's like all right it's and then sometimes it's challenging I almost want to try some stuff but at the same time I don't want to go down that rabbit hole you know so I'm I'm curious though 
Do you find now that your largest audience is outside of Asia for the Asian cuisine to get that authentic flavor? Or do you have a large audience still in Asia mostly? Um, yeah, actually, um, the last time I checked, my, my largest audience is in US. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, US and Europe, not so much of Asia. Because I think if it's Asia, people in Asia are like, oh, we, we know how to make all this food. That's why I think that that's why they want to learn other things, right? Whereas um, um, people from other parts of the world are very curious about Asian food. So For yeah, sure. that, yeah. And, and I wanted to say, um, like, you know, you were talking about Ethiopian a lot. I think... Um, I think I I don't have a pro okay, I don't mind if people call it calling a dish like Asian inspired or yes. Asian fusion yeah. or yeah. you know Asian style. I think if they yeah. just call it Asian and it's really not Asian, that's yeah. that's when I'm like, but this is not how we eat it over here. You yeah. know, it's yeah. just really not. But I think it works both ways because mm. if you come to Malaysia mm. and you go to some like very Chinese shop that says oh, this is the part of our Western menu. <laughs> I look at it like, ah, oh, they don't serve this in West. Yeah. In the West. It's like, they have like, you know, weird things like, um, I mean, they have like things like chicken chop, which everybody knows as a, here, everybody here in Malaysia knows it as a Western breakfast. But honestly, I'm like, no, if you go to, <laughs> you know, and all that, you can there's no like chicken chop, that kind of thing. Or like, you know, they, they make this very weird, tomato soup with, uh, with pasta I, I think it's like a very asian minestrone soup but i'm just eating it it's like how can this be western <laughs> so this i guess italian this isn't western <laughs> yeah I, i'm sure that uh, every culture has that kind of that that happens across the board yeah do you yeah, do you so... have um do you have a specific course that just does the absolute best um, sorry, what do you mean by that's the absolute best? Oh, like sells the most? The most popular oh, course? Oh, you know what? I haven't actually checked. Um, no? Oh, I should check now. That would be interesting, right? <laughs> uh, I know my tempeh course was very, um, yeah, very... Tempeh is cool. Yeah. And... Yeah, tempeh and, uh, tempeh and natto are two foods that I have on occasion that aren't technically 100% raw, but are a ferment, right? So they're like a, a living food with, uh, you know, enzymes and all that good stuff. Yeah, you know what? Because um, if you're looking in terms of sales, uh, let me see. It says best, I don't know whether is it just best selling in terms of the last 30 days? Um, hmm. Oh, this is interesting. Look at you looking into analytics that you haven't really looked into. Yeah, I'm looking at analytics, but I'm the same. I'm just like, I just focus on putting stuff out more. But I mean, obviously, uh, having a bit of both is is beneficial. I'm trying to I'm trying to get better with that myself, actually. Oh, okay. So yeah, the people who are buying the most, you see, they're from. Oh, oh, this is interesting. Um, U.S. U.S. is the highest. And then Malaysia, and then Netherlands, Canada, oh. Germany, Spain, Sweden, Croatia, Australia, Belgium. Yeah, so it's U.S. followed by Malaysia. Hmm. That's so interesting. Cool. And that's but you know I that's I think just the... one of those. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm just looking. I want to look at all products to see like. <laughs> You're obvious. Yeah, I'm obviously like not even looking to see how many. You know, I just like <laughs> making food and I like <laughs> creating food and 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 coming up with new stuff. But but after yeah, and then I'm just like, oh okay, I think I have enough money in my bank account to buy my ingredients, and then I'll be like, ah. So I don't actually know like uh which I I uh, which products, but I do have my best selling products. But I think. The thing is, uh, because my products are part of the bundle, so right now the Asian sweets and treats are supposedly the best selling because everybody from the bundle is uh, downloading it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, you know that's yeah. kind of cool so to that, say though in in this kind of topic because I I all admit I'm very very similar in that um, I don't check my analytics very much and I, I'm more just creative, wanting to create and share and just blast it out there. But I think a lot of people who are thinking about starting a business, they might think, well, I, you know, I'm not business 
wise. I'm not tech wise. I, I don't have that kind of a background, so I probably can't do it. But both of us are here showing like if you're passionate about something and you just enjoy creating and sharing, that's a really darn good place to start. And, you know, that brings me to two big questions. One's a little bit offside. And then the other will focus mm -hmm. on more afterwards. So the first one is, mm -hmm. have you ever thought about making a course about how to make a course? So I thought about that. At one point, I think when I first started creating courses and I was like, oh my God, I can like create a course all on my own. I don't have to hire someone to do it, you know? And, yeah. I, uh, and I thought it was like the best thing in the world or something. Mm -hmm. Right? You, because I'm, I, I have to admit, I'm not very good at working with people together on a long long term basis just because i'm i'm very detail oriented and very fussy and if people don't do things my way i get a bit upset and annoyed <laughs> so i'll be like <laughs> so i realized yeah I, I just admit that so i'll just be like you know if i work with somebody i'm like why don't you do it this way you know, so that way so isn't I realized, good like, stop <laughs> <laughs> so I realized like when I create it on my own, I have full control on how I want things to look, how I want things to be presented and all that. So I was very, um, I actually spoke to this lady because she was, uh, she, she has organized um, vegan festivals before. And I told her like, oh, you know, I want to give this talk about, you know, how to create your own ebook and how do you create your online courses and all that. And she's like, oh yeah, but I, she's like good good it's good to know that you know you're passionate about this and you're making money you're interested then she said like i don't think anyone will come for your event though oh. i was like really i don't know so um yeah so i never got around to doing it but to be honest now after creating like 27 courses like i'm tired i'm like yeah. can i just send this to someone else to make it i hear you yeah. i hear you i only brought it up because what i've seen time and time again is the most successful courses or uh, products often are built around like teaching people to do it or to make money, you know, like if you yes. teach people to make money. So, I mean, and you're, you yes. have so much skill around this, you know, you, you have a lot of experience and I mean, that could be a, a crazy seller. I mean, it's just a, one of those business truths, you know, teach people how to get what they're looking for. And most people are looking for money or the opposite sex or the same sex, whatever it may be. Um, and, yeah. you know, so really, money, really cool. health, relationships right yeah i think it was yeah. those top three i mean well ted carr is like the the yes. person to teach all those things He's it's like... true and that's a part of the bundle as well he has some uh, information about how to make a living within the raw vegan niche so if you guys are if this talk is inspiring you and you already want to do that you know like you know check that out it's an amazing part of the bundle there's 40 resources in there and there's lots of courses lots of ebooks and that does also though kind of bring up the thing it's like sometimes we might also think, hey, yeah, I'm interested in doing this, but hey, Chef Yin's already doing it. Or like Ted Carr, he's already doing it. And it's like, yeah, but not with your flavor, you know, not with your personality, not with your energy behind it. And people connect yeah. with different people. So it's like, you know, there's limitless opportunity and we're still a small growing niche within raw food. And there's always going to want going to be people who want to learn how to be an entrepreneur and make a living on their own because you know, they look at people like ourselves and think, man, I wish I could be doing that, you know? So it's a, it's a stumbling block a lot of people have that isn't really there unless we put it there in front of us. Yeah. Actually, you know what? My boyfriend has taught a short course on how to make money as a musician, how to make money online as a musician. But there were some people who were not musicians who took that course as well and found that useful. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's but cool. that's very basic. It's 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 like a ba but it's basic, but it's good because it's a very good foundation if you've never done it ever before. And he has also done like consultations. Um, you know, like he does one hour consultations with people who want to grow their business online. Or yeah, I think that there also was a um a comic comic artist actually taking a uh, who took some uh coaching sessions with him on how to um create your first. Uh, product on Gumroad, so so mm. so yeah. I'll, I'll let my boyfriend do that. I think yeah. he's a better teacher <laughs> doing that. I'm yes. just like I want to make all this Asian food. Actually, no. You know what? Now I just want to make Lisa's wraps. I'm like, I need to make this. <laughs> you know good. what? I kept dreaming about her wraps. It's so funny. Like, 
I think it was like three nights in a row. I'm just like, oh, I want to, I, I want to like, I kept dreaming. I'm like, I want to make her everything bagel wrap. I want to make this wrap. I, want to make that wrap. Uh, I think I made three of her wraps so far and they're like really good. So I, I so. have, I have two in the dehydrator. I mean, it's the same recipe, but you know, like two wraps in yeah. the dehydrator and I have a friend coming yeah. over for dinner before my next live later. And so I'm, for the first time, I'm going to try her wraps. I'm really dang excited because she, she really cracked the code, you know, like I, I'm, a lot of us have made wraps and like I've made some wraps that are pretty good. Like I'm yeah. pretty happy with, but I can tell these are next level and it's, it's so funny. And you know, this is a little bit separate, but when I, when she first told me, cause you know, Lisa and I are kind of heading this up and behind the scenes yeah. all year talking about it. And when she told me yeah. I had to make a rap book, I was like, yeah. cool. Like, <laughs> like, I mean, you'll probably have like 20 or 30, like wraps, like, It'll be a book of just the wrap, you know? And then she's like, oh, yeah, no, it's like, you know, like 30 wraps with 30 different fillings with 30 different sauces. It's actually 33. And they're all totally different and so creative. And, yeah, it, it bumped up the wrap game to the next level. You know, like your course or that book itself, just just themselves are easily worth the 50 bucks for the entire bundle with 40 different things, you know? And I, I always say, like, you know, you know, you could spend 50 bucks going out for dinner, you know, or you could go to the grocery mm. store and buy a durian, one durian and eat <laughs> yes. it. It's amazing. And I would love it. You know, I would love it. But this, this entire bundle could completely change your life and change the life of people around you forever. Cause you have it and you can make all these different recipes yourself. Right. And learn yeah. so much, you know, with the courses, yeah. the yoga and all that other stuff. I, you know what? I had a similar reaction when she told me like, I'm doing, hand salads and i'm like what's that and then, yeah, then yeah. she started putting pictures and i was like Ooh, oh those oh. are hand salads oh i would like that and then i mm -hmm. made it's funny because i made the first one i think the ginger one and i liked it so much i i, I was supposed to save half for my boyfriend but i liked it so much i just ate the whole thing <laughs> no nope. so so the next day when i made it i had like okay i'm gonna make double the portion of everything yeah so that we don't have to fight over it you know, it's funny too with that because I went and shopped for the ingredients for making the wrap. And then my one friend was like, hey, um, you know, is there a night maybe I can come over and have some of the food you're making? And I was like, yeah, I'm like the wrap night's probably the best. But then I was like, oh, man, did I just promise to only eat half of a wrap? And then last night I was thinking about it. I'm like, wait a tick. This is actually for two wraps. And I was just like, yes, yes, yes. I don't have to buy any more. We can each have a full wrap. <laughs> yeah yeah cool so oh, next I, big oh. question this is a big one and it, actually if you have a thought you can continue with that first and then i'll get into a big question oh yeah no i just wanted to answer anna's um questions because she was like she was talking about um there's a german youtuber who lives in china married a chinese woman and he brought his wife and the uh, family to a chinese restaurant in Germany, and they were like is this really what german thinks chinese food is like yeah. It, that's that's similar to you know when 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 my boyfriend and i when we travel to us and then, and then he goes like oh this is what like uh chinese this is the chinese food that chinese people feed to us people who think this is chinese food and then and then yeah. you can go and whisper to them them and go like oh can we have the the authentic chinese stuff and then they'll rattle everything off that is off menu which is really chinese the so, real food <laughs> I'm just like, what's this general soul thing? I've never heard of it ever before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just the, the watered nice down though, version but... or the, yeah. <laughs> it, it is nice. I, I mean, I do like certain things. Like, like yeah, mm -hmm. that are like... And I guess it's American Chinese. I would call it American Chinese. Yeah, no, it's not Chinese Chinese. It's funny. I've, I've heard, and I wonder if this is true. Some people have told me the best Chinese food in the world is from New York. Have you ever heard that before? Most probably New York in Chinatown. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. because when I, I I was in New York City in and I was in Chinatown, I didn't eat did I eat the food? I don't think I ate it. I did go to like, you know, the Asian markets there. I was like, whoa! They have yeah. everything, like so every good. single thing. Like yeah. everything that, that, that I can get over here is like they have everything so yeah yeah, yeah. so that, I, that that was great yeah i wouldn't be I've, surprised actually i've spent um a lot there and I, I've, I've spent more than 100 bucks on a durian meal 
in New York before, <laughs> just all fresh durians. But uh, but they have, they have such variety there. So I, a big question. This is a big one. Mm. If you were to do it all again, start totally from scratch, what would you do? Like if you're if you're brand new and you're like you wanted to streamline it and start your business from scratch, how how would you how would that look like? What would that be? Wow. As in, yeah. You have, so you have, let's say you have, you have a limited budget. And you're like, I want to try and make a living off of this. Like, what what would be your first steps? You think? Yeah, because I'm trying to think whether I want to do um, a hybrid or not. Because what what um, I mean, what actually happened was I was doing in person, you know, classes courses that, and then after that, I was <laughs> I had no choice that I had to do online, and then. Um, this year, I'm trying to figure out whether I want to do like a hybrid. I mean, I, I do some, but very, very limited. And I, I just take on things that, you know, it's fun. <laughs> yeah. So Sounds, sounds um, like you made it, Ian. That's, 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 the, that's the beautiful thing, right? It's like you get to a point where you're making enough income that, you know, you're just like, okay, well, what do I really enjoy doing? What do I want to do? But sometimes the, in the beginning, it seems that there's some groundwork that maybe need to be done that isn't quite as fun. Yeah, but I think I think it's really important to get your business foundations right because yeah. if you, yeah, if you don't, then you know, um, yeah, <laughs> a lot of people will just like you know that like, oh, I oh tried it and then didn't work and um, yeah. whereas for me yeah so I think yeah uh, yeah get your business foundations right you know understand your market understand your audience um, I mean I studied copywriting you know. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I do come from like a writing background because um, I did write press releases for a really long time. So I, I am uh, in that way, whatever I did in my previous life as a corporate communications executive, I can, um, yeah, I can, I'm also applying it here. And, and I was applying it all the time when I first started uh, my Rochefian business as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think get a strong foundation in, in marketing and business. Mm-hmm. Um I don't know whether it's the same video editing because I'm like, <laughs> I don't like to edit videos and I'm like, oh my God, now I'm like doing all these online things. I mean, you can obviously outsource it. I mean, Ted, yeah. Ted Carr would say like all these things that you don't like to do, just find somebody else to do it yeah. and outsource it. I guess, I think I would like to learn how to delegate work to people and learn how to let go. I think that would have been... Yeah, that would be. It's important. tough to do. It's it's just tough to do, especially yeah. if you really know exactly how you want it, like you said. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, if you want to scale your business, that's what that's what you have to do. You know, you have to be accepting that things are not going to be like hundred percent the way you are. But um, you know, even if it just reaches eighty percent, um, your business still runs, and it's I think it's fine as well. And um, yeah. Would you? That's how um, it is, but. Would you say that uh, Gumroad is a great place to start for people that, uh, you know, maybe don't have a lot of capital, but want to start an online course or a business? Yeah. So I like using, I, I like using Gumroad because they, um, they don't charge a monthly fee because when you're doing courses online, a lot of, um, a lot of the platforms, I think like Kajabi and all that, you know, they t- charge a, a month. You have to pay a monthly fee, whether you're yeah. making um, money or not so if you're first starting i think that is is quite uh that's quite good actually i mean that's why i did it because uh, i mean now i have sales every month but there were last i'm trying to remember actually last time also i had because i was like always pushing you do have to keep marketing though even like yeah. you've already created your courses right you have to keep pushing and marketing and announcing yeah. because people just don't know or there are new people mm-hmm. coming in i mean you have to do all the <laughs> customer acquisition and stuff like that as yeah. well um so yeah i think gumroad is a good platform although um when i first started i was really happy with it you know yeah. and um it's very very clean uh platform as well it's just that i think recently they've started taking a bigger cut they used to take a a, a smaller percentage you know so every sale you make then they take a percentage mm-hmm. of yeah your sale but they've started to take a bigger cut so um is it closer? Some, is it above like 15, 20%? No, I think it's about 10% or so. Okay. That's, that's <laughs> to be pretty, honest, I can't remember. Yes. I don't actually. I just it's like, that's all right. See, every Friday, 
every Friday they give they send me an email saying like, oh, you know, Gumroad payouts and you get this amount of money. I just went like, oh, I've got money coming in this week. Oh, I've got money. <laughs> like just now, I just looked at it like, oh yeah, cool, I got money coming in. I, I can but, relate. <laughs> I can relate. But I don't go like, ooh, how much do they take? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think it's uh, I think it's about it might be about ten percent. I don't think it's fifth. I don't. Mm, don't quote me on it but the last time I checked I think it was about 10% but it used to be less I think they used to take maybe like 8% or there's there's different tiers as well but I think because if you you yeah there's like the um they take more but you I don't know I think yeah they, I remember there were different tiers there was like one tier where they take slightly more and then another tier like I think you pay a membership and then they take a cut but they take a less cut because you're already paying them some kind of fixed fee but i never paid them any fixed fee no yeah so i think in that way is good um i i don't think they have a limit to how many videos you want to um, upload onto their site wow. as well that's awesome yeah yeah that's, so that's you're huge. not bound yeah you're not bound by that so i think that's quite good and then they also introduced some monthly things i guess people should just kind of like you know, look around and see which are the platforms that offer you the um the what's the word the the features and functions that you require and whether it yeah. meets your budget. I think that's what it is. Um, I try using PayHip because I know that's quite popular as well. Yeah. My boyfriend also used PayHip, but I didn't. I wasn't because I was using Gumroad for so long already. Then when I was trying to do something on PayHip, I'm like, oh, I don't know where the buttons are. I don't know how. To... Yeah, you have to start learning all over again, right? Yeah. So then I thought like, and, and then PayHip, I think you need to pay an extra amount of money to if you want to host the videos um, oh. on PayHip. I think it's yeah. like an extra five dollars every month. If yeah. not, if you're taking the free thing, uh, I think you have to put the videos onto YouTube. And then um, embed it embed into them. the pay hit thing. Yeah, yeah, which I didn't really like because people can just go to that YouTube and, and share your videos anyway. Although I do tell us, I'm like, you know what? I, you know, if people access my videos for free and they didn't pay it, but they start making my food, I'm like, it's still that's cool, good. actually. It's, that's usually yeah. a sign of, uh, you know, like once you get to a certain point, there's, there's going to be a certain amount of people that do access your stuff for free. So like I've, I've seen people upload my my books to like sites that are uh, just free share sites and stuff like that and yeah. some of that's you know you, you it, it just goes i guess par for the course unfortunately but like you said it's also getting out there and, and people are using it and i think usually the people that uh find the free versions they may just really need that you know like they're either yeah. mentally or, or financially just not able to to make that happen yeah. otherwise yeah, so if they're actually making my recipes, I'm like, cool. Like, I, yeah, I know someone uploaded one of my um, my ebooks onto Scribe. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I pay money to Scribe. So I was like, oh, look, hey. I'm there. <laughs> I was like, I was happy and upset at the same time. I was like, yeah. all right, I made it, you know, like before yeah. uploading my things to But then me. wait a second. <laughs> How come my sales have gone down? <laughs> So I was like, should I complain? I'm like, nah, just leave it there, oh. you know. <laughs> yeah. I've been in the same boat. Absolutely. Absolutely. So do you do you find, like, do you make most of your income through the courses or do you have any other kind of side revenue streams uh, that you've created as well within this kind of niche? Yeah, so I think you should um, uh, try and have multiple income streams rather than, you know, just... Just one thing, and uh, yeah, I, I was like, oh, we we sh we we shouldn't use the eggs in the basket thing because that's not very vegan. And as you're talking about vegan eggs, <laughs> which I the, the mangoes recipe. in the case don't don't count all the mangoes in the case. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So um, I also do um, uh, endorsements. Uh, uh, oh, they they call it like a product ambassadorship. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I do that as well with um, the Superfoods company. But I'm very, um, I'm very selective because I keep getting approached by companies who are like, oh, you know, can you yeah, be our ambassador for this? And I'll be like, uh, but your stuff has oil in it. Or like, your, yeah. your things are vegan, but it's highly processed. Yeah. <laughs> so I have to keep telling people like, I only do fresh fruits, only vegetables. <laughs> Yeah. and um you know superfoods and maybe some organic things and something like that so um yeah. 
so yeah, I do the the endorsements. Um, I've also um, I also did a bit, but not a lot of the um. They call it KOL here, like key key opinion leaders. Is it? Okay. Well, basically, like creating Instagram reels for brands, you know, oh, or wow, like cool. uh. Yeah, but yeah. again, a lot of them, are, like, like I just, I keep getting this um, fake, fake meat, like, like plant-based meat companies coming to me like, oh, you know, can you help promote this? And we'll pay you for doing these reels, doing this post and all that. I'll be like, no, I don't want to promote your plant-based meat. <laughs> I don't mind trying it and telling people yeah. how it tastes, and, you know, once in a while, but yeah. I don't feel like I want to take money for mm. something that is like, you know that no. has like yeah it, it just doesn't align with with no. what i believe in like where i truly believe in so um i've t- i've had to turn down a lot so i only took on two companies because they were both fresh fruits yeah, yeah one was an avocado thing and one was a, a cherry thing so i took that on um so yeah because i have a lot of friends who who do that now you know they they get paid for creating it's basically an ad, right? Yeah. Where it's like a reel yeah. or it's it's an IG story and all that. Um, so well, I do it that. Sounds too, and, it sounds too like you mentioned that you know you don't really love editing videos all the time and and you know and you want to focus on doing stuff that you really enjoy. So it also just sounds mm-hmm. like that doesn't really align even with kind of what you want to be creating and uh, yeah. energy you want to be pushing right now. Yeah, yeah, because. Um, yeah, <laughs> like I said, I, I, I don't I don't like people telling me what to do. They're like, oh, you need to put a logo here. And I'm like, dude, if you put a logo in a video, no one's going to watch it. It's going to look like yeah. an advertisement. And they're like, yeah. no, the client says put a logo here. I'm like, yeah, but can you not tell your client, like, if you want a lot of views, do not put the logo here. They're like, no, you just put the logo here. And I was like, you should be telling you. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> why are you hiring so- me? Like, why, why are you? <laughs> if you think I know what I'm doing, why are you hiring <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes I get requests and I'm just like, uh, uh, if you just give it to me and don't tell me what to do, I'm not just gonna, ch- I won't even charge you. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll do something, but but just don't tell me what to do. So. Yeah, well, you you got the heart of an entrepreneur. I I, I totally, uh, hey Julia, um, I I can totally resonate with that as well. And it's funny too because the the more you put stuff out there, you know, the more you start to grow, the more opportunities come and eventually it does kind of start to snowball and you get to a place like like you kind of mentioned even just that, yeah, you're just like, oh, that's good. Things are coming. I'm not not really coming from a place of like need to do this. It's like mm-hmm. you want to focus on what you're enjoying. And it's yeah. funny. Um, I, I do the same. I really love it. And, you know, I share my cat a lot. So I actually get like lots of, you know, pet clothing companies and pet food mm-hmm. companies approaching me like, hey, like, we want you to be an ambassador. And I'm like, that's not really what I want to shift my focus to. I, I, I want to focus more on raw food and, you know, some of the stuff that I absolutely love and absolutely use, you know, I do a couple of those things too. And it is really amazing, you know, that, you know, when you're creating a business around this, of course, a lot of it can be your own creations, right? But mm-hmm. there's so much you can offer in terms of affiliate marketing and, and whether that is like, you know, fresh fruits and vegetables, which I've done a little bit of, of myself. And I, you know, I do like Vitamix blenders and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also, you know, like I, I sell lists of books on my site. I mean, I could, could have a, you know, affiliate for you and have it on my site and like, you know, cross promotion and helping each other out. You know, it's a, a beautiful way to get started and create a larger, you know, stream of income and shop base, right. You can be sharing more yeah. than just your own stuff. And, um, you know, getting out of the mindset of uh, competition instead of collaboration and cooperation and all that stuff can be really helpful for people just starting with, uh, you know, their entrepreneurial journey. Yeah, I find that collaborations are like um, very important and also very highly effective, actually. You yeah. know what? That, that's a good idea about the, the, the um, yeah, just the, the affiliate books. I, I completely forgot about that because Gumroad does allow that very, very easily. Or really? let's say if you want to be my affiliate to sell my books, you just need to create a Gumroad account. And yeah. then we just agree on a percentage. Mm-hmm. And then, um, yeah, and then I just click on the Gumroad. And then, it, you know, whatever you sell or your thing, you just get paid directly by Gumroad. I don't need to yeah. do anything. It's all automated already. Yeah. yeah. But, let's, um, let's talk a little bit about that behind the scenes. <laughs> I'd love to... You know, yeah. I, I don't because you have so many like you know like 
did you say 30 courses or 27 courses? Yes, I think 27 now. I don't think I'd put one. every single individual yeah. one, but find either one or just even like a cool link, like check out Yin's. And I can put your link for Gumroad when I put this on my website as well, uh, just to, to share your stuff direct there. But we'll, we'll talk about that behind the scenes. But this yeah. is just a good example, too, of, you know, like connecting with like minded people and friends and cross promoting. And, you know, that way you both grow, you know, it's. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, you were talking about multiple streams of income, right? That's one, yeah. I think, like, one of my students, she did that. So, she did sell um, some of, uh, she did manage to sell some of my um, my courses at one time. So, I had some, um, yeah, money coming in from there. Um, previously, I, I I have done some pop-up dinners, but not, mm-hmm. not recently because, um, yeah. So, I don't know. I was just thinking about it, like, oh, is that something I want to do, but um i obviously can't just do that myself so i also need because previously i i um, had an assistant to help me with a lot of things so we would do it together but now i don't anymore she's yeah. yeah so um that's the other thing and then um uh, i've done like recipe development as well for some brands as well oh, yeah that's cool. how, how do you yeah. get into that and how do you make those kind of connections with uh companies because i mean obviously it's a very different thing stepping from you know, the one-on-one and the personal and just working with your stuff to actually connecting with corporations, companies, and, you know. Yeah, you're... usually they come to me. <laughs> there we go. So it started with you building yourself up. And once you got to a certain level, then other people are like, hey, what's she doing? I, 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 yeah. I need a little bit of that. I think because you see, yeah, yeah. I, I just started building myself. And then, um, I mean, when I first started, I think I had no shame. I would go to... I will go to like, um, you know, I will go to, to vegan restaurants and say like, hey, I can do this for you. I can do this for you. I kept, you know, I just kept pitching and hustling and all that. But the more recent, so that was the first few years, right? I started in 2016. Yeah. And then after a while, then I was like, oh, opportunity because then people see you. And then, and then the press started interviewing me as well. So I'm on radio, I'm on TV, um, I'm on the vegan festivals. Um, and then, you know, I'm on, also on social media as well. So actually a lot of people find me on social media. Sometimes when I ask them, yeah, they do actually. Like recently when I was doing that photo shoot for um, the, the print magazine, yeah. um, they were do, doing a feature on um, Earth Day and they came up to me and I was like, am I really sustainable? Then I started listing out the things like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely leading quite a sustainable life compared to other people. But I don't... I don't <laughs> it's awesome and it's crazy though like i mean there is yeah. there is no bigger decision than going vegan and raw vegan to yeah. create a more sustainable you know lifestyle it's like people yeah. it's, it's funny i think that's really a cool there's two cool things i want to make sure i talk about both of them um one the first one more in the entrepreneurial spirit is mm. like you said kind of being shameless and just knowing like if you're not putting yourself out there no one will at least yeah. until you get to that point where you, you reach a mass where all of a sudden people are like, hey, I want to put you out there because I can see what you're doing is like snowballing and can help me too. But, yeah. you know, like being being shameless and it's, it's easier behind the camera, like sometimes in front of people and, and in person that can be a little bit more challenging. But um, a good way to start is just, you know, like this in front of the camera and, and doing some videos or doing posts and reels and all that kind of stuff to yeah. to build yourself up and, and to really blow that out there. Yeah. Plus, I gave the the TEDx talk as well, so that that yeah. has also really helped. Um, um, yeah, boost my credibility and people know about me because I think I had like fifty nine k views already. I was like, wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. And do they have your links and stuff all in there? And and will they update them if you want them to? Uh, I don't think they. I'm not sure. Let me look. But I know people come to my YouTube channel and go like, oh, I found you from um, the TEDx talk. And that day, someone on our, one of the Instagram lives as well for the bundle, she, he also said, she or he or, or they <laughs> did say that they found me from the, um, uh, the TEDx talk as well. So, I mean, because what I do is like, uh, that's the other thing, right? I do go into that. Uh, so it's on the TEDx channel, but I do go in... Um, to the channel and the, the actual video. And when people comment, I reply back. So I think that's how that's people smart. find me by my YouTube as well. Yeah, 59K views. It was four years ago. Yeah. I know Lisa uh, talks about that a lot for, for growth in terms yeah. of you know social media and Instagram to 
not only put out your content, but just like you said, like answer questions, answer posts, and even yeah. you know, even post on other people's like other people who have you know established audiences and are of like mind, or even some people like to do it on people who are completely opposite, right? And just stir the pot <laughs> a little bit, but um, creating a buzz and being a little bit shameless, as long as it resonates and connects with you and is you know feels feels good to you, then that's a great way to to grow your audience as well. Yeah. So no, the TEDx, they don't have my thing. <laughs> you know what's no. really funny? <laughs> they actually have a note saying like, well, some viewers might find advice provided this talk to be helpful as a complimentary approach. Please do not take this talk for medical advice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's important. I mean, within the raw food niche, even in, in eBooks and stuff like that, sometimes it's important to have those little disclaimers, right? Because uh, you, you don't want to get nipped yeah. in the bud. Yeah, but I'm sharing this as, as my own personal experience, yes. you know. So, yeah. but anyway, yeah. So, so yeah. So I do reply to the people there. So I think they see me from from there as well. All people, all people. I think if you give a, a TEDx talk and you know it resonates so well with someone, someone I think will take the effort to look for you. And yeah. it's not, yeah, it's not that easy if you Google Raw Chef and you'll be able to find me on on yeah Facebook and Instagram and all that. I mean. Yeah. It, it's funny because I have like a love-hate relationship with social media. On one hand, I'm just like, oh, I don't want to go online. On the yeah. other hand, it's like, it's 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 because of me going online how people can find me. And, th- yeah. and that's how I pay for my bills and my durians and my <laughs> hemp hearts. <laughs> yeah, no, it, makes, it makes the world go round. I, I can food, very yeah. much resonate with that same thing. I uh it sometimes is a love hate, but a lot of times it is like the thought of it is way more challenging and, you know, a bigger hurdle than actually doing it. You know, like once you decide to do it and like you're doing lives or you're, you're making things, it's like, oh, okay, like, yeah, this takes some time, takes some energy, but it results in a, a lot of connection and, and, you know, it's very uplifting and empowering and, and helpful. Yeah. I mean, like we get to talk. I was like, wow, I think I haven't spoken to you for, when was the last time we chatted? Was it like... Uh, the 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 last raw vegan I think it was puzzle? the last puzzle. Yeah, I think it was because wow, I, I, so like it's I said, a year. I think it's been a year, <laughs> and that year's flown by. It's crazy how fast. But and I I find I get triple busy during the bundles, of course, and mm. you know sometimes I have uh, you know less oomph to try and be out there and do stuff like this. I just usually do like mm. a video a week, or sometimes a little bit less outside of the bundle, and then during the bundle it's like two or three a day. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I'm like limiting myself to two or three lives a day. I can't do anything more than more than that. I, I'll yeah. be so drained. I get yeah. like really tired and really drained. That's why when I, um, when people are asking me now whether we can collaborate, I'm like, like I can't because it's like I've already filled up most of the slots because I'm only doing like two, two in person a day, and then because I also want to do my own, um. Like today, I, oh, I made um, I made uh, uh, Danelle's pepperoni sticks, and it's so good. It's oh, the yes, one I in the that. collaboration. Yeah. yeah, it's so good. You you should yeah. try that. Like yeah, like, like just the I, filling itself. It's like wow. Those yeah. jumped out to me, and I have some nori, and um, and I've had yeah. those. I remember not those, but I remember I went to a store called Erewhon in Los Angeles. And they had kind of like a raw food section. They had something a little bit similar. And I remember having them in like, I was like, whoa, those are really good. There's a lot of possibility there. I got to try that. That that group collaboration, I mean, that's a good thing to mention too. Since Mm. anyone who's here, if they, you know, just jumped in that we're both part of the Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle, um, you can grab that in the description below from either of our links. And in the bundle, beyond 39 other individual brand new, never before released products from everyone, there's a group collaboration book. There we go. Group collaboration book, which is raw vegan appetizer favorites. And it's over 40 recipes from a bunch of contributors from the bundle. Some that have their own book, some that really just created uh, or put in their own appetizer, their favorite appetizers. There's a lot of really good ones. You know, you know, Ian, I got to say, I, I hope you give that one a try. I made that. And my friends literally, they said, I think this is the best thing you've ever made. And it is pretty crazy. But it it may not be totally authentic, like a super authentic spring roll, but it's pretty close. It's pretty close. I, 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 this, this did jump out at me. I was like, ooh, and then I looked at the ingredients. I was like, oh, that's good. It's not like super difficult. I think it, it's quite straightforward. So pretty yeah, simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like to make it. Yeah. yeah. 
let me know if you do. It's a tasty one. I, I want to make some more throughout there. And it's, uh, that's one of the things that's kind of funny. It, you know, during the bundle week, I want to make all the food. And, and at the same time, like I was, I was out looking for places and running around oh, and shopping for ingredients. Yeah. And then I come home and we have the live. And I'm like, I want to make something yeah. from the bundle, but I don't have enough time. And I made a smoothie. And I almost uh -huh. felt a little bit guilty just to make a smoothie because it's like, a, uh, <laughs> it's too funny. Oh, I, yeah, I think this this time I, I have um, reminded myself to like prioritize rest, yeah. you know, and, and yeah. So like yesterday, I think the other day I wanted to make um, Sky's falafels. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or so Sky. because and cool it's too, too classics it's two parts yeah you make like a sriracha and then after that you know you sprout your lentils and your chickpeas so i sprouted my lentils and chickpeas but after i made the sriracha i'm like oh i'm so tired then i was like oh but i really want to make this falafels and then i was like then i tell myself like no 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 please get some rest because yeah. you know this is going on until you know next week and um so i i frozen the i frozen the the, the sprouted some of the sprouted chickpeas and the lentils so I'll, I'll make it when I am yeah not so crazy tired because I don't want to like yeah, yeah. overwhelm myself no yeah. I hear you I'm, I'm skirting that line right now I'll, I'll admit uh, although yeah it's not really fully in alignment with um, you know holistic health and is a short bundle I, relatively speaking I've been up to three or four every night since the bundle started <laughs> Oh, it's crazy because when I saw, saw you doing your, your lives, I'm like, isn't this like way past Chris's bedtime? Why is he still away? Yeah, yeah, that's the one tough thing, right? Being across the, the world. I've been able to sleep in a bit, but it's definitely been uh, a little less than is optimal. And I'll be taking a, a little bit of a break after the bundle, you know. But uh, I was looking through her book as well, and I wanted to make a recipe from it. And I'm thinking as long as I'm able to, I'm going to make her uh, sushimi uh, recipe. I wanted to make the poke bowl, but then kind of like you mentioned, I was like, there's a couple steps and break down so busy. I think just having a machine would be really good. Right now. I'm curious if anyone else yeah. You just have really you need right now. Uh oh. What's can you hear me well? Yeah. Oh, I think you're back. Yeah, I think you're back. Can you hear me okay? Okay, perfect. Did I did I sound like a robot kind of uh, bird or something? <laughs> a robot bird lag it's like um i can hear you speak and then i can hear your voice but it's your voice is very it's back to being very clear but there back is to being like, radio <laughs> voice i'll get my radio voice on and it'll take me seriously <laughs> i i wanted to mention um because we're getting to the hour mark and at the beginning we yeah. talked about the shirts i just wanted to mention that really really quick because i think that's a really fun thing in terms of you know like entrepreneurship and, and creating a business and you know, when we talked about, um, you know, different platforms, for example, like I know you, you, you're using Gumroad and that's really great that, mm -hmm. that they offer the free start and, you know, you just get a little bit yeah. from it. And then, of course, there are options for, like we said, you know, for membership sites and all that stuff that mm -hmm. have a monthly fee. Um, and it's the yeah. same with like clothing, you know, like, for example, like this, this shirt, when I when I first started my business, I started really just with a couple of ebooks and doing consultations, you know, and I, I just put myself mm -hmm. out there for consultations. I, you know, I had a background in, uh, in school and, and coaching through that as well, but I, I just put myself out there. And once I built up a bit of a base and had some money, I, I continually invested in my business. And, and one of those investments was starting to make shirts, right? And I made a whole bunch of shirts, but mm -hmm. just like Gumroad, there are also really cool, simple ways to create merchandise without putting any money up front. Um, mm, places yeah. like, you know, uh, Printful or um, Teespring, which I have actually stuff on both of those platforms. And uh, just like, you know, like the courses, you can spend a night or, or longer, depending upon what you're doing, mm. and put some stuff together. And then just you share that, right? You just, it just starts that, that ball rolling. And there's always free ways to get things going if you don't have a lot of capital, but you have some spare time. 
Um, yeah. And that can be really helpful for people to start creating something and building up from there. Because often it is, like we said in the beginning, just creating that firm base at the bottom so that you have a little bit more freedom to mm -hmm. work on some passion stuff as well. Yeah, so it's 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 basically like print on demand, right? Actually, my yeah. boyfriend did did that as well. I, um, because he wrote music for a video uh, game. Yeah, so he wrote he wow. he wrote that's cool. Not not all the music. He was like a guest uh, guest composer. So like, um, there's one part like like. Oh. Wow, that's cool. That's super cool. Please, please do. Yeah. Oh, sounds. Uh oh. Huh. That's strange. No, I can still hear you perfectly. So yeah, everyone, let us know if you still can't hear Yin or you can't hear myself, and I'll talk a little bit more right now. But but maybe you know, speaking of rap battles. For now, you can be the hype man. You'll be like, "Yeah, you," and like you know, just say little things while I'm talking, and we'll see if we'll see if they can hear you putting the hype in. So that uh, once they once we hear that they, they they can hear your hype in the background, like yeah, then uh, yo. <laughs> oh, so if if anyone else is in the chat too, let um, let us know. Uh, yeah, Jin uh, Jung Su, let us know too if you can't hear Yin, but. Um, Something that I'll mention here too is just we mentioned it a little bit, but oftentimes, you know, focusing on that 80 20 rule, right? Where mm. the things that you do, you know, like the 20% brings 80% of the income. Oftentimes, it's really wise, you know, when you're starting a business to really start on that 20%. Like you might want to start tangenting all over the place, but if you start on that 20%, like for example, for myself, I probably have 10 or 15, no, probably like 15 streams of income, but some of them are like, you know, some of them are maybe, you know, a hundred bucks here and there, you know, every month, mm -hmm. maybe a little less. Right. And then other ones, I make a bunch more. And definitely my, my bananas and dates are consulting and eBooks and, and like the bundle. So I, I pour most of my attention into that. But once you have that firm base creating that 20%, then it's like, let's create these other little streams. So I go on you know, print full and I create some t-shirts and just add that to my shop and mention it here and there. Um, I reach out and, you know, get, you know, affiliate links through Excalibur or Vitamix and different u tools that I really, really utilize. And, uh, you know, then I, once I built up some capital, I created an iPhone app and, and share that. And, you know, that creates mm. some income as well. And all this stuff snowballs. And then all of a sudden you're, you know, you're asked to go to events and do in-person things and, you know, opportunities just keep on coming, but starting with that firm base at the bottom that makes, you know, that 20% that makes 80% of your income, which obviously is going to start small, but starts to grow, that allows you to free up your time and start to create all those other revenues and get noticed and have people asking you, just like people are asking you right now and your opportunities just get bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, yeah, very, very true. Yeah. <laughs> It's funny, I had a question the other day. I think someone asked me like, oh, um, I think she basically, uh, he or she basically said something like, um, I am worried that I won't be able to make a living out of it. And then I said, well, if, if, if you're going to be worried, then I don't think this is the right thing for you to do though, because I don't, I, I honestly don't, I don't want to like, you know, sugarcoat it and say like, oh, this is such a great thing to do and it, it's so awesome. So and, easy. And, and yeah. like, it's not. No, <laughs> it's, it's not. not easy. Oh, no, it's not. It, 
it's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of determination. Um, I'm just like so passionate about it. I cannot imagine doing. I, I don't right now at this time. I don't imagine myself doing anything else. I mean, I'm. No. I, I yeah, exactly. So I think it has to be something that you really strongly believe in. Because I never ask like, "Ooh, can I make money doing this?" Ooh, you know, like, no. how am I gonna pay my bills? I'm just like, "Oh my god, this is like the best thing in the world. Everybody in the world needs to know about it." <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so true. And I mean. With, with some of the tips that we're sharing and with, you know, like the, the resource that Ted is putting out in the bundle, people could have a running start. Like people really could have a running start and make a career out of it. I mean, it's good to have some cushion behind you and, you know, to maybe you still have a side job that you're making money um, can be helpful for a lot of people, especially if you have a lot of bills, right? But yeah. I know for myself, for example, like when I first started, I was in the same boat where I was just like, this is what I want to do. Like, I can't imagine. Actually, I remember... I was living in Los Angeles. I had a very serious relationship at the time and I was procrastinating starting my business. I'd already been a raw Buddhist for five years. I was really procrastinating. And I talked about what I wanted to do and it came to a point in the relationship where she actually was just like, you know what, like, I want you to like grow up, get a real job, you know, and, and, Aww. you know, this and that and like eat cooked food. Yeah. She wanted me to eat cooked food with her. And I was like, you know what, like, I remember we actually had a fight and I was like, I'd rather die than do anything else. Like, this is what I want. Like, that's really what I felt in my heart. I'm like, this is it. And we broke up. And a week later, I started the raw advantage. And like, I've worked it full time since. But, you know, because I moved out, all of a sudden I was back home with my parents, you know, at like, I guess, 23, you know, and uh, like 20 years ago. And, and, uh, or, you know, that's a little bit off. Sorry, at 27, because it was 15, 15, 14 years ago. Anyways. Um, and I was just like, you know what, like, this is what I want to do. And I'm going to pour my everything into it. And I was just so passionate. And I was very blessed because I had my I was living under my parents roof. So I, I didn't have much, mm. you know, much bills and they helped me out with food and like very blatantly, honestly. And again, I think people starting now, they don't have to go through the same stuff I did because of what we're sharing and because of like Ted Carr yeah. sharing so well. But when yeah. I started, like, I was making like, I think my first year I made like one or two grand, you know, and I was working like 10 hour days, six days a week, you know, for the first four and a half, five years, you know, cause I didn't have money to pay people. You know, I, I didn't have the mindset of it being worth it to pay people. Um, and I was not tech minded and I was just like trying to put stuff out there, but not knowing what I was doing. Right. But like you said, this often is really passion driven and, you know, entrepreneurship, there are so many benefits. You can travel around the world if you want, you know, work from your computer. Um, you know, there's, there can be low overhead, all that stuff. But a lot of times it is <clears throat> a little bit of you know, less security because maybe you don't have like a medical or dental plan, like some jobs give you, um, mm -hmm. you know, you, you make yeah. your own hours, but at the same time, it's always your responsibility then. And it's easy just to like shuck it. Right. But, uh, it's it's a mixed bag. I wouldn't do anything else because like you, I don't really like being told what to do. You know, so if you if you have that strong spirit and you just you know what you want and you're you're driven um, and you're willing to put the time and energy into something that can really blossom and grow and create a really bright future for you, then and then this is an amazing path. But it's not just the easiest one unless you just really get lucky, which for some people that can happen, you know. No. no, no, yeah, yeah, and unless they were yeah. born with a silver spoon, you know, occasionally they're the people that, uh, you know, they already have all the connections and all the money and, you know, like stuff like that. But, and that's by zero means am I saying that to, to put any shade in that area at all. I mean, everyone has their own circumstances. It's just, really the four what i'm trying to say is uh most of the time it really does it, it takes a lot of time and energy and mm. effort but if it's something you're passionate about uh if it really fits your you know like your essence and what you really want to do and it, it can be one of the most amazing choices in the world and that's why i wanted to talk to you about this because i think there's a lot of people who are interested and you know getting a bit more keen insight and then also a little bit of a roadmap can help really get them started Well, oh, well, you know, 
we well maybe it's YouTube saying you know what you guys have shared enough about this. Um, we're at 74 minutes and I, I want to respect your time. And I also just really thank you again for everything you contribute to the bundle, everything you contribute to the movement um, and for just being here with me and, and, and sharing this. Cause you know, a lot of times people can think, you know, competition, I don't want to share my, my secrets. It's like, no, we want to grow this pie. We want to share this with as many people as we can and, and help people raise their health and raise their finances so they can live that healthy, happy, uh, you know, life that they really are dreaming of. Yeah. Yeah. No. Exactly. It is. It is, especially, especially in the health movement, you know, because there are so many people who need this message. You know, it's like we're, we're, we're sometimes we're shouting into the wind, right? So we need more voices, right, to raise up above that wind because most people are dying out there, sadly, of things that they could prevent, you know, of their own choices that they just don't really know. Or they think it's more painful to make the healthy choice than to to just continue what they're doing and, and develop a degenerative disease. So we, we really do need more people who are rising up and sharing their passion and, you know, helping create more health and more community uh, that is interested in health creation. So I think it's just a beautiful thing to make this pie bigger. Yeah. Th thank you so much for like inviting me and welcoming me into the community because I remember the first raw vegan bundle I, I, I bought that bundle because I wanted Lisa's book, you know, and yeah. then and then I started trying out the recipes. I'm like, wow, this is awesome. <laughs> and this is all, all free. And I, I learned so much. I, I, I keep saying that over and over again, because even though I have, um, you know, background from learning from other teachers and other academies and all that, they never taught me how to make like oil free stuff. I mean, like, I mean, if it's smoothie bowls and all that. Yeah. But, you know. If not, it's like there's always so much coconut oil. There's like, you know, two cups of cashews or there's like olive oil drizzle all over. And then it's only um, because of the first healthy but raw vegan bundle, like everything was absolutely oil free. That's when I like, oh, you can do this. Oh, 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 I don't need to put oil into my chocolate sauce to make it mm. smooth and awesome. Yeah. So, so I've learned so much as well. And I think that's the other thing, like um, people keep forgetting. I don't know why, but in like in Asia, they go like, oh, you know, you go to school, you go to college, you graduate, you get a degree, then you don't go back and learn anymore. And I'm like, no, we're learning every single day. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. And, and we and all we all learn from each other and grow together, right? And it's like, I think I think the thing that's kind of unique, there's a few things that are unique about this bundle. One being that, you know, like everything is brand new, every single bundle, like never before released. So we all come together for a launch party, right? Which is, is lots of fun. Yeah. And the other thing, like, I, I like to honor all styles of raw food and I think all of it has its perfect time and place and gets people in it and gets people excited. And there's no doubt that like the amazing food that Matthew Kenny makes and other people make is mm. a step above like the mainstream food out there. It's like, it's, a, it's way above that stuff. It's very helpful. But the thing that's, I think uh, in comparison, right? I think the thing that is very unique about this bundle is that health is really at the very forefront, you know, like, mm. so you can have different foods that it like, there's different priorities there, right? And and what we're really trying to create here is a, a streamlined path to longevity. If you really want to go on a raw food diet and or just introduce more raw foods into your life that can be as simple or creative as you like with simple ingredients or exotic ingredients, but you know, putting it all together with that same shared message of um, longevity and enjoyment and at the same time, health being a really high priority. Yeah, because those are... That was a common objection. I met a lot of people who go like, oh, I tried raw food, but it was like, you know, it's too many nuts and seeds. I keep hearing people say that over and over and over again. And yeah, um, yeah so I'm glad that, the, you know, this bundle, and when I found you guys, I was like, oh, okay, I don't need to put so many nuts. <laughs> yeah, so so that was, uh, yeah, that was very eye-opening for me. And 
And, I'm blessed to hear and, the bundle. The bundles for everyone, not not just the people who are purchasing it, but the the creators. And mm. you know, I, I'm learning so much myself every single bundle and and going through everyone's um, <clears throat> everyone's uh, resources and books and courses and stuff like that. Because you know, oftentimes we can get pigeonholed and think like, oh, this is this is what it's about. But it's like the horizons broad, <laughs> and whether it's different palettes, you know, people just sharing their yeah. different palettes or people yeah. just sharing their different perspectives. Because as we said this isn't just raw food, you know, it's, uh, yeah. you know, there's all the other fun stuff, the mindful set mindfulness stuff and the, the yoga and the fitness and wisdom grown through life application and all that stuff, spirituality. And it's a, uh, it's a really fun connection and community that we're growing and sharing. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Okay. I know we, we, we should go soon. <laughs> I have to go to the this bathroom. Like actually incredibly bad. I'm starting to swerve, <laughs> but they, <laughs> Thank you so much, Ian. Uh, so much thank appreciation you. and love to you. And uh, thank you, everyone who joined us. And again, if you haven't already checked out the bundle, I'm guessing that some of the people here are the the diehards and they've already grabbed the bundle. They're just enjoying this conversation. And thank you so much for enjoying it with us and for the comments and the love shared. And if you haven't checked out the bundle or if you're watching this on replay here or I'm going to try and get it on Instagram, be sure to check out the bundle in the link below in the description or in either of our uh, Instagram links if it ends up on Instagram and hopefully see you guys in another live. All right. Thank you so much, Chris. And thanks Thank everyone as well. Have a good day. Bye. See you, Kat. See I don't you. know how to end this. Oh, that's, that's where I go. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>